Earlier this year, a nationwide survey found a shocking lack of Holocaust knowledge among millennials and Gen Zers. The Holocaust was the genocidal program carried out by Nazi Germany. That program killed six million people, most of them Jewish, but Nazis also murdered LBGTQ people, the Roma, Jehovah's Witnesses, and the disabled. The list goes on. That kind of thing cannot be forgotten. After the report came out, our Hannah Yeshivi spoke with one of the few remaining Holocaust survivors, Edith Pagelson, who lives in Falmouth. Now, connections of that kind of history are rare. So we have Hannah Yeshivi joining us now to talk more about her Holocaust story. And Hannah, tell us what it was like to speak with a survivor. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Amanda. Stories from survivors are just so hard to digest because they give you the perspective that nobody else can. In Edith's case, she lived in New York with her family. She was in her teens, and then the Nazis took power. She tells me her father immediately went to one con concentration camp. He was killed there, unfortunately, but she was with her mother along all the way, and she went to three different concentration camps with her mother. She ended up surviving the Holocaust. She moved to New York, lived there for a couple decades, um, and then moved here to Maine. But it's really interesting because she writes a book, it's called Against All Odds, A Miracle of Holocaust Survival. Edith says she writes this book because it's just truly a miracle that she's alive. It was like five times she tells me that she thought she was gonna die, and it was just miracles that happened. She survived, and she says her mission is to teach as many people about the Holocaust and for kids, for adults, for everyone to never forget about this moment. What a chance to sit down with a survivor. Hannah, what left the greatest impression from your conversation with Edith? I think at the very end of our Zoom interview last week, Edith told me she's really worried about who's gonna teach the newer generations with less and less survivors with us. And she thinks it's the responsibility of teachers, professors, parents, mentors to now teach the newer generations about these topics. Um, she says she, a lot of the survivors like her wrote books, um, did documentaries, videos, went to schools to teach about these um, atrocities, but it's now the responsibility of teachers and she really hopes people can step up and teach about this topic. So this week you were able to speak with a social studies specialist for the Maine Department of Education about this topic and as we were all wondering what Maine schools are doing, how do they teach then about the Holocaust? It's very interesting, Cindy, because they told me, um, I spoke with the Maine Department of Education's social studies specialist. He says they don't teach about the topic, and it, I'll go back. It's not mandatory to teach about the topic, but Maine schools and Maine teachers teach it through a movie, through a book, and of course, all of those things turn into class discussions afterwards. So, or maybe through World War II, but it's nothing specific, no specific names, um, maybe the prominent names, but nothing too detailed because there's a lot in social studies that kids have to learn about. But it doesn't mean they don't teach it, but it's not required. And here is a bite, a sound bite from um, the Maine Department of Education social studies specialist talking more about the topic. Where we would see students learning about this would be in terms of understanding, you know, conflicts and compromise. This is, you know, foundation of you know, humanity, right? We fight and we also find ways to not fight and we compromise. And where would the, the Holocaust fit into something like that? Um, but we don't try to boil it down to the, well, make sure you know this person, this place, this event, this uh, date. Hmm. Amanda, do you remember how they taught you about the Holocaust because I'm wondering, did you ladies learn about it in school? I, I remember learning about it in school, but I, you know, as we were going through this story, I, I was trying to think of how old I was when we first started having a conversation about it. And I really, I couldn't tell you, I think it was probably not until high school at least. And the most that I know about it now is from research that I've done on my own. Did you guys not have to read the diary of Anne Frank in school? I'm curious. No, I, I, I mean, I knew it. about I it, it in but middle school in middle school. What about you, Amanda? I'm sorry. I knew about it, but I, I didn't have to read it. No. 
Interesting. Oh man, that was, no, I absolutely learned about it in, in school. Uh, big study of the Diary of Anne Frank, but much more than that as well. And then I'm also so surprised that these younger de generations don't know about it, given the number of movies, at least, that we have had, like Schindler's List, etc., cetera, um, that, that you would think they would they would be aware, even if they're not documentary watchers. But they're older. I, I'm curious, Hannah, because you yeah. are younger than us, uh, how did you learn about yeah. it? So I remember in middle school reading both The Diary of Anna Frank and a book called Night by Ellie Weasel. But then I was in a Jewish school, so then in 11th and 12th grade, we read a lot and we did kind of a deep dive about the Holocaust. The reason was, at the end of 12th grade, all of my class went to Poland in a trip called March of the Living, and we visited most of the concentration camps in Poland. And it was good that we learned everything beforehand. Once we were on site, we learned, we knew about all of those details. But it was just um, one of the best trips I've done in my life because it just changes you. It's so powerful, mm -hmm. a very, very sad trip. Um, but it's one of the ways that they're keeping people um, to learn yeah. about the, tro the topic. Obviously, yeah. they're not doing the trip now due to the pandemic, but they're gonna keep doing it once yeah. this is past us. Yeah, my son went to Dachau too, so, so I just think that's an incredible service to give to our next mm -hmm. generation to be able to share on that kind of personal level. Hannah, thank you so much.